What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I'm gonna be going over some of the bigger books that I picked up recently in that collection. One of the things I did was I separated out all the books that I had valued at $100 or more. So that's what we're gonna be going over here. I did one video already with the first 30 that fell into that group. This is gonna be the next 30. So let's check these books out. <music> Right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I mentioned this in the last video where I was going through the first set of 30. And I know when I was filming the unboxings that I had kind of like a light and there was a lot of reflection on it and some of the bags are old so they reflect light weird, all that kind of stuff. So now all these books, the books that I had valued at $100 or more, they're all in Mylar's. And so now I'm gonna be able to show them and hopefully like angle them so you don't see reflections, you actually see the books. Uh, and so, yeah, let's start getting into these. This is the second set of 30 that I valued at over $100 in that collection. So the first book here is Black Hawk number 71. Now, the reason this one is on here is that it's got this sci-fi cover. This just tends to be a little bit more desirable book because of that sci-fi cover. Uh, Black Hawk isn't a super popular character anymore today, uh, but this is one book that actually has some value, and it is pre-code. It doesn't have the Comics Code Authority yet. Then we have Black Magic number 18. Uh, if you watched one of the prior videos, there was a Black Magic number one, but that unfortunately did not make it into this over $100 category. The reason being, it was another book that had the wrong interior. It had an interior from like the old school Daredevil comics. Uh, I was uh, I was not happy <laughs> when I when I saw that. But uh, but yeah. So but this one is actually a relatively nice condition. Uh, so Black Magic number 18. Then we've got a few superhero books. We've got Captain Marvel number 65. Very nice presenting copy of this. Kind of a weird sci-fi cover though. It's like these like potato men. <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah, but still like a, a nice presenting copy, great colors on this one, sci-fi cover, which is always, always a plus. And I mentioned that in that prior video, a lot of the books in this collection are lower grade, lower condition, but the colors tend to be very nice, and a lot of times they're they're decent presenting, and the problems are a lot of splitting. Uh, this one isn't. This one's actually a pretty nice copy, but they do present well, especially in the mylar. So that was something that's that's nice. So just trying to make sure that you can you can see it without the reflection here. But Captain Marvel number sixty five. Then we've got Captain Marvel Junior number forty nine, kind of like a, a demon cover. Uh, but again, just a book that is in decent condition, so relatively decent condition. So uh, one of the books that valued at over $100. Then another Captain Marvel Jr. number 51. It's kind of like a, a monster cover. Again, a book that's decent condition. And now this book surprisingly has quite a bit of value to it, even though this is a very low grade copy. This is Casper the Friendly Ghost number five. These Casper issues from St. John Publications, who did the first few issues, are very difficult to come by. You don't see them sell very often. You don't see them come up for sale very often. And they actually have a fair amount of value. And this is a perfect example of one of those books that it's a lower grade. I think the spine was mostly split. I'm almost certain it's a detached cover, but colors are very nice on this copy. It presents well. And so that's the, the benefit. The nice thing about some of these books is that even if they are lower grade, uh, they do actually have a pretty good presentation. So Casper the Friendly Ghost, number five. Uh, jumping back to a pre-code horror book, we've got Chamber of Chills, number 22. Uh, again, a lower grade book. This one does have some chipping along the bottom, chipping uh, a little piece like cut out up here, but pretty crazy, <laughs> a torture cover. Uh, but I think this was by Lee Elias. Yeah, so Lee Elias, of uh, he did... Black Cat 50, Chamber of Chills 19. I mean, a lot of the big Golden Age pre-code horror books were done by Lee Elias. But yeah, Chamber of Chills, number 22. Uh, then we've got Crime Can't Win, number 41. Uh, this is actually just a pretty nice condition copy. Nothing particularly key about this issue, but this is a, a nice copy from Atlas, you know, precursor to Marvel. Uh, but Crime Can't Win, number 41. 
then another pre-code horror book, we've got Dark Mysteries number three. Uh, this was another one that I think had quite a bit of, of spineware. Yeah, you can see it there. I think it's a detached cover, uh, but cool pre-code horror cover, giant kind of like monster on the cover there. And again, nice, you know, nice colors, nice presenting copy for the most part. So Dark Mysteries number three. And then got a Batman book here. We've got Detective Comics number 229. It's not Golden Age, technically. It's it's uh, got the Comics Code Authority up there, uh, but just a pretty cool Batman cover. You got Batman and Robin kind of in the scuba gear underneath the underneath the water there. I always like the, the water level images, the covers like that. I always think they're cool. But Detective Comics number 229. All right, so that's the first the first 10. Now for the, the next 10 here. This one is, it's another Detective Comics, very low grade book. Detective Comics number 236, first appearance of the Bat Tank. You know, so if you're wondering when the first appearance of the Bat Tank is, it's Detective Comics number 236, this one right here. Uh, then we've got Doll Man number 43. This one could have been much nicer, but there was, I remember there was some pretty serious damage, I think, on the interior, or there was like a page that was missing some of the interior, something like that. There was some interior damage to this one. But Doll Man, it's technically Doll Man Quarterly, number 43. Pretty cool monster cover. You don't get a whole lot of, like, monster horror type covers with Doll Man, so uh, this is a cool one to be in there. Uh, then we've got, this is another one that unfortunately has some pretty serious interior damage to one of the pages. Uh, this is Fighting Yank, number 26. Uh, this is an Alex Schomburg cover. You can see his uh, Zella signature there, which is Alex backwards. This is that was what he was doing for some period of time. Uh, but yeah, Fighting Yank, number 26, Alex Schomburg cover, but unfortunately some pretty serious damage on the inside. Uh, then we've got Forbidden Worlds, number 33, pre-code horror book. Uh, not a super high grade or anything like that, but kind of a cool, weird monster cover. Now this one was a was a nice surprise to see in there. This was a book that I was not familiar with, and I just learned about it as I was going through this collection uh, because I'm not an expert on every genre of the Golden Age. There's a lot of stuff out there. This is four color number one thirteen, uh, and so you can see down here introducing for the first time Popeye Comics specially written and drawn for this book. So this is the first time that you had new original comics stories for Popeye. And so this is actually considered one of the pretty big keys for that character. Uh, and so Four Color 113, if you ever see this one, this is actually a pretty valuable book. And it's a, again, a really nice presenting copy. I think this one was fully attached and everything. Uh, it's just, you know, it's got some spine wear, that kind of stuff, but pretty solid. And, and I think there was a decent amount of cover tanning on the interior. Pretty solid presenting copy of Four Color number 113. Then this is one that I actually did a short for, or like one on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, this is Fritzy Ritz number 27. And the thing that actually makes this book more valuable is that it has early Peanuts appearances in here. So there are three pages of Peanuts stories. So Charlie Brown, Snoopy, that kind of thing that are on the interior of this book. And those early Peanuts appearances add a significant amount of value to these books. Uh, so something to keep an eye out for. If you come across uh, like the United Feature Publications, Tip Top Comics, Fritzy Ritz, uh, you will occasionally find issues that have those early appearances. Uh, then we've got what is was actually a pretty nice copy uh, of Green Hornet number 27. This was one of the nicer condition books that was uh, that was in this collection, but uh, nothing particularly key about it, but just a relatively early hero comic, Green Hornet number 27, in a pretty nice condition. Uh, then we've got Green Hornet number 29, really cool skull cover. This one was a little disappointing uh, because I'm pretty sure the staples have been replaced. Um, there's tape that was put on the interior to kind of like allow the cover to be reattached. Uh, so kind of like reinforced at the cover and then staples added back in. And I'm almost certain they're not original staples. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure they're not the original staples. Uh, but yeah, Green Hornet number 29, still really cool skull cover. Still has a lot of value, but a little less than I was expecting. Uh, then we've got Green Hornet number 35. Just a cool early 
cover. I mean, I really, whenever I see these Golden Age covers that have this blue tone to them, they always catch my attention. You don't see that blue very often. And there's a, uh, you know, there's like a crease up in the corner over here. But overall, pretty solid presenting copy, Green Hornet, number 35. And this is actually probably the highest grade book that is in this entire collection. Unfortunately, it's not like some super key or anything like that, but it is a number one. It is Henry number one. Uh, this book is really nice. Like there's a few little, you know, spine ticks. Uh, go there. But I mean, this is a very, very nice copy of this book. I mean, I was thinking minimum seven to seven five, and I wouldn't be shocked if it got into the eights. This is one that I will end up getting graded just because I don't think I can get the value out of it if I try to sell it raw. This is one where I will have to get it graded, in my opinion, to get the value out. It's not a super valuable book. I think even graded in maybe 200 to 250 if it gets that type of grade. Uh, but still, pretty cool. I was. This is what I was hoping to see a little bit more of in this collection, just every once in a while, coming across a book that was like really nice condition like this. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but this one is very nice, and at least it's a number one. So has has a little bit, you know, going for it with that. All right, so that's the second set of 10. Now for the, the final set of 10 here. So there were a ton of books from this run that were part of this collection. Most of them don't have too much value. They're, you know, 20 to 30 type dollar books. Uh, this one actually has a little bit more value. This is Heroic Comics number 24. This is much earlier. This is from 1944, and it is a Japanese World War II cover. You've got the Japanese cruiser or battleship or whatever on the cover there. You can see the, the flag there. And it's actually a very nice presenting copy. There's some staining, I believe, on the back. But Heroic Comics number 24, Japanese World War II cover. Uh, then we've got Ibis the Invincible number six, uh, actually kind of like a, a horror type cover, monster cover. Uh, this one is, again, lower grade than what I was hoping for. I don't remember everything that was wrong with this one. If it was like, I think the spine was split and it was reattached with tape on the interior. It was something like that. And then there's a couple little chips on the side here. But still has a pretty decent amount of value. So Ibis the Invincible, number six. And this is a perfect example too. Colors are great on this copy. Like this is a very, very nice presenting copy. Just unfortunately, those split spines, just brutal. All right, this was the one other Alex Schomburg cover. Uh, this is It Really Happened number three. And you can see it actually, he didn't use Zella at this period. This was uh, actually wrote Schomburg. And this was from, I believe this is 1944. You've got the World War II Nazi cover. And a, again, decent presenting copy. I think this one also had some staining. Yeah, I think it's, see if it'll come through. Yeah, like some staining down in that corner there. But... I believe this one was fully attached and colors, again, fantastic on that copy. Uh, then we've got, this is one that was just kind of a surprise to see in there. Uh, I, I knew it was in it from the flip throughs, but just a surprise with everything else that was in these boxes. This is the Gold Key Jetsons number one. Uh, now it does have a fair amount of spine wear there, but this book still has quite a bit of value. First comic appearance of the Jetsons and no big pieces missing or anything like that. So even though it has that, you know, that spine wear, it's still a pretty solid presenting copy. Colors are great. Everything on the main image is pretty clean. Uh, so yeah, Jetsons number one. Then we've got pre-Thor Journey into Mystery. We've got uh, Journey into Mystery number 18. Uh, this one, again, has quite a bit of wear to it. I think there was a big tear. Yeah, so you can see here, there's this huge tear across the front doesn't go all the way across, but it's repaired on the inside with tape. Uh, so it's a low-grade book, but still very early Journey into Mystery, Journey into Mystery number 18. Uh, then we've got Pre-Code Horror here, Journey into Unknown Worlds, again, Atlas. A lot of the horror books in this collection were Atlas. Uh, there were a couple ECs, but we didn't get either of the ECs. Uh, so Journey into Unknown Worlds number 21, this one's in here more so because it's actually a pretty decent presenting copy. Uh, so yeah, just uh, kind of a weird cover. Uh, Atlas, a lot of times they did these little like preview panels over on the side. Sometimes the preview panels are better than the cover. Uh, so it's just something to always look out for when you're checking out those books. 
This is one that has a surprisingly large amount of value. This is another Atlas book. Uh, this is Jungle Tales number one. This is a pretty rare book. You do not see this one come up hardly ever. Condition is pretty decent on this copy. I mean, the main the main issues are are some spine wear, um, but overall, really nice colors. Again, just I, I keep repeating that with this, uh, you know, the books in this collection. Even if they have spine wear, split spines, that kind of stuff, they have a lot of books that actually present pretty well. So Jungle Tales number one. This one doesn't present all that well. A lot of color rub on this one, but still a number one. This is Lassie number one. Another one that I wouldn't have expected this book to have all that much value, but it does actually have a, uh, a decent amount of value. Uh, so Lassie number one, and it's got a cool back cover too. But yeah, Lassie number one from Dell. Now this one, this is, I, I do think this is one of the more valuable books that's in this collection. It is very low grade, but the last sale I could find was from six years ago. There are none available anywhere except this one. Uh, this run on average is just pretty tough and I think this is the best cover from this, this short little run. This is Laugh Comics number 47. And so this is an MLJ, which is the kind of like the precursor to Archie comics. And you can see that uh, it's Wilbur over here, which is kind of like the copy of Archie that Archie did. It's like they ran Archie comics, they ran Wilbur comics. Uh, this is a low grade book. There is no question about it, um, but it's got that like the good girl art type cover. It's got the woman in the swimsuits early. This is 1944. This is a very short run. And it's Laugh Comics spelled with the X. If you look up spelled CS, it is a different run of books that is later. Laugh Comics spelled with the, uh, the IX instead of CS uh, is a much more scarce run. And this is actually, in my opinion, is one of the more valuable books that's in this collection, even though this is a, a low grade copy. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool one to, uh, to see there. And now the last book from this set of 30, and this is just one of those where a lot of times, if you can come across number ones, number ones tend to have quite a bit more value than the, the later issues. Even if the rest of the run might not be all that in demand, the number ones, a lot of times people will just collect those. So this is Mad Hatter number one, and it's kind of like a superhero kind of a monster type cover. Apparently, that's a, it sounds like that's supposed to be a gorilla based on the, <laughs> the description down uh, down here. It doesn't really look like a gorilla to me, but maybe, you know, it's supposed to be a gorilla. But Mad Hatter number one, the last book that we're going to talk about in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen the first 30 that I did, make sure you go check out that video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you want to see the future videos about this collection. If you'd like to see more content on my channel, I got more videos over here. I've got the subscription button right here, and I will see you in the next video.